Good day, ladies, gentlemen, boys and girls. Welcome to Kingfisher's YouTube channel. Don't forget to like our video, subscribe to our channel, hit the bell icon for notifications. Okay guys, I'm gonna do now a backline rig for drone fishing. It's a lot lighter than the reef one that we use for droning. Um, what we require, I'll just go through it quickly, obviously a pair of pliers, or our mustard scissors, 45 kilo maxima leader, that's gonna be between the actual swivels, a little yo-yo, or a bigger yo-yo, doesn't make a difference, I'll use both, doesn't make a difference. 28, uh, 22 to 28 kilo Kingfisher leader line, obviously our sinker, 5-0 tuna circle, our 4x5 um, power swivels, and of course one or two of these little red floats. Okay, to carry on, what we need to do, I'm just going to take the leader part of it. There we go, the Kingfisher leader line, one mole, and again, 1.2 meters always seems to work the best for me. 1.2, there we go. going to double it and then the third one you can add more hooks to it if you want but three hooks seem to be the golden number for this kind of trace our power swivels one two three power swivels they are a lot smaller than the reef trace. Everything is a lot lighter than the reef trace. Um, the fish that you're targeting would be cob, uh, grunter, piggies, um, or steambrass as they call it down in the Cape. Um, stumpies here in Natal. Any of your edible fish that uh, patrol the beaches. Okay, so all we're doing is tying a figure of eight, like I showed you in the beginning of the reef trace. It's exactly the same. The big R, obviously, to the leader, the small R to the sinker, and the middle one will be your hook snooting one. Okay, guys, just remember the knot video link is in the description, so you can see how to tie the figure of eight or the snelling of the hook, of the circle hooks, that is. So don't forget it. Just click on it and you'll see the videos there. So there we go guys, there's the leader part of it done. I'm now going to do the hook snooting, which is done with either 22 kilo, 28 kilo, it's up to you. 500 seems to be a good number for this, so we just go 500, snip, cut, and once again, the third one. Okay, grab our uh, five O's, one, two, three of them. You can use different size hooks depending on the fish that you're targeting, but for demonstrations, I'm just using the five O. I know it works here, it works well for the stumpies. Um, yeah, and the cob that we get, the small little five kilo cob at together, and that it works well for shad. Oh. You can. You can vary this trace. You can either have all your hooks on the bottom on the sand, or you can have two floating up and one on the sand, or you can have one up and two on the sand. It's up to you, depending on the fish species that you're doing. I'm gonna have two up and one down. Okay, so to do it, we just snell the circle hook. One, two, three, there we go. The reason we use circle hooks for, for drone fishing is that the fish actually hooks himself. When you're droning out two to 500 meters out, it's very hard to feel the actual bite unless the fish is actually taking line off the reel. Um, with edible fish, it hardly happens. Um, and we're using a very big sinker to anchor our bait in place. So yeah, edible fish, very hard to detect the bite if you're using a J hook. 
and also easier to release the fish if you don't want it. If you're hooking unwanted fish, unwanted fish size-wise, very important, um, undersized fish, it's quite easy to, to release them with a circle hook. And baiting a circle hook is so easy when it comes to edible fishing. Okay, so what we're going to do is I'm going to take our first little float. Like I said, I'm going to have two floating up and one down. There's so many variations you can do. It's up to you as an individual, depending on the species that you're trying to target. And you can get glow-in-the-dark floats for nighttime fishing as well if you want. Um, you can use glow beads if you want. It's all up to the individual how they actually want to fish for the edible fish and where they're actually targeting their fish over the sandy areas. Again, just attach with a figure of eight. Go through, over and under. And you can always play with the length as well of the, the hook snoot. If you find that for some reason, it's the float, it's the non-float ones that are getting the bites. In other words, the middle one that I'm going to be doing with uh, no float, then change it. You just take the hook off or the float off and tie on a hook without a float. It's up to you. So this one will not have a float on. So like I say, you've got to actually go through the whole process of trying to determine which one's actually getting all the bites. And the only way you do it is by putting one of these out initially. Once you've caught your first one or two fish, you'll, you'll soon work out whether they want the float or not. And our trusty sinker will go on the end of that. Okay, so I'm just tying it on to show you the completed trace. Obviously the sinker will only go on at the end. Don't forget to put a weak link in it. I know you're fishing over the, the sand, but sometimes there might be a rock, a log in the water that you get caught onto. So there's your weak link. Okay, quick and easy, just a figure of eight. Okay, show you how it works. That gets droned out. There we go. So that one's gonna be floating up. That one's gonna be on the ground, and then that one there will be floating up as well. Okay, so you're gonna have two floating up. So you'll have these two floating up in the water column, and then that one over there on the actual ground. So just make it shorter, show you. It's very difficult over here. That one's gonna be on the ground. That one's going to be floating up, and then the third one will be floating up. Okay, so it's very simple, very easy. Like I keep on saying, it depends. Sometimes the fish want it on the actual ground, so you take the float off. Um, other times they want them all up, so cut off this one here and then put a float on it. Play around with red, red beads, green beads, red flotation, um, green flotation. There's so much that you can do to it at the moment to try and work out what the fish want. And it depends on the area that you're fishing and where you're fishing and the fish species. Okay, I'm just going to show you quickly with our trace what we do because they are very, very long. We sell yo-yos like this. You can either have a small yo-yo if you want or a big one. Since I'm doing the backline traces, I'm going to use a, a big one and just show you how we do it, how we put it apart. Okay, so... Let's just cut that off. Okay. To pack it away and store it is always a problem when you're making long traces like this. So take the first hook. And again, all we're going to do is just hook it in there like that. Hook it in there like that. Leave our float. And we're just going to wind it up. And we always start with the sinker side first. The reason being is the last swivel that's left is the actual swivel that you're going to tie your leader onto. So you tie your swivel. I'll show you now as it goes. There we go. Hook that in there. Get on going. I'll show you now quickly. Okay, so that is the last trace. The last swivel, if I take that loose, that's what my leader is going to be tied onto. 
So I tie my leader onto it and I just wind and this whole thing will unwind itself, unravel itself. The last hook goes all the way to the end here. I'm just going to stick it through there. There we go, nice, neat, tidy, not going to hook onto anything. And of course, we've got our trusty Kingfisher trace pouch that we put it into, designed for these yo-yos. And again, we just open it up, stick it inside. So we've got our reef one, and we've got our backline one. There we go, inside there, close it up, and we're good to go. It's as easy as that. Go out and enjoy it.